Yeah, hi. Uh, today we're going to look at the three-phase stepping motor. Um, it's uh, like a four-phase stepping motor, but instead of having four wires, it has three wires. So let's take a look at the um, the uh, Berger Lair motor. Um, I guess it's a Snyder company. Snyder owns them now. Um, but in 1972, they invented the five-phase stepper. We never, we never drive those here at Copley. But in 1993, the first three-phase stepping motor. That's pretty cool. So let's take a look at it. Um, so it's just, it looks like a brushless motor. Uh, it, it has stepper characteristics like large holding torque doesn't go very fast. It's not a servo motor. Uh, I think you can get these with encoders on the back or absolute feedback devices. I haven't investigated that here, but Copley can, of course, take incremental encoders for encoder corrections or even uh, absolute encoders. Um, so this, this motor here is a very interesting uh, winding, um, you know, nominal, 325 volts, uh, 12 Newton meters, uh, 4.1 amps R mass, 1.8 ohms, electrical time counts, constant tau equals L over R, so you can figure out L. Um, the, the thing you got to watch out for is uh, they specify the speed in frequency. So based on your bus voltage, your step rate will start to roll off. Okay, this is uh, 10 kilohertz. Uh, I think it's a 300 full step or 1.2 degrees. We'll take a closer look at that. So this, this is the limitation of the speed. Um, but just, just to give you an idea of how you do this, if you had a nine Newton meter winding and it was three amps continuous, divided by nine Newton meters per amp, you'd have three Newton meters per amp. And uh, that means if you have three Newton meters per amp, you have three volts per radians per second. And there's kind of like a fudge factor of 104. So that's 312 uh, volts per kRPM. So that's why you have to use 240 volts AC if you want to get anywhere near 1,000 RPM or uh, 100, 200, 300, 400, 5, 6, 7, 800 RPM, it'll start to roll off. You get a voltage limit, you know, plus a high R drop. Anyways, um, let's take a look at this new version of CME, version 8.1 beta 9. And if we look at the basic setup, uh, three-phase stepper. It's kind of back to the future. We used to have this in the past with an XSL Zenith Sam Larry drive, which uh, is a Zenith, but made with lead, and we're trying to migrate away from that. Nobody uses it in new designs, and we haven't seen very many people ask for this three-phase stepper. I like it because it's kind of like open-loop sensorless control, not going very fast, and a subject for another time is how do we drive a regular permanent magnet brushless motor, not a stepping motor, open loop. We did it once with uh, a Fal Harbor motor to go 20,000 RPM. Um, so it doesn't matter if it is a stepping motor or a servo motor. I mean, if you're going to pay for a servo motor, you might as well get commutating encoder on that too. So why sensorless? Um, if you had feedback, of course, incremental. Uh, this is not a plus drive. Actually, it's an XTL Zenus with ARM. If if we have BIS C, why didn't we add it to the list? We could. Let's find the customer first. Uh, no break, so no break time. Can good. Now take a look at the motor data. Uh, big inertia, inductance, resistance, 1.2 degrees, 300 full steps. Uh, so when I go to the uh, the current loop, uh, the manual phasing screen, and rotate the current vector, I'll have to rotate it uh, six times for one electrical cycle. And so based on how many uh, 
you know, how many how many electrical cycles I find. Uh, 300 divided by six here in this case. It'll take 50 spins of the manual phasing dial to get one rev of the motor, six ways to hook up the power to the wires. That's 300 full steps. And here you can see we set the micro steps to 10 times that. You know, you could increase it more, maybe 9,000 if you want. Um, I didn't see much of a, a difference by increasing it more than 10 times. If you have an encoder, of course, you could set the micro step equal to the encoder count. That makes a lot more sense for one count is one micro step for encoder correction. Anyways, calculating the initial tuning values uh, gave me a bandwidth that wasn't sufficient. Maybe I had a kilohertz. Maybe I had uh, 500 to a kilohertz, right? So I had to tune the loop uh, by adjusting CP and CI to get about two, two kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. And so you can see uh, the magenta is the command and the actual goes out and rolls off. Ah, it's the, it's the dog test. You know. Do you hear that? I hear that. So yeah, two kilohertz of current loop bandwidth. Uh, the reason we have a lot of bandwidth is we have 550 poles and we're trying to rotate uh, as fast as possible without running into a, a frequency limit there. Um, it may be a little excessive, but I'm trying to get as fast as I can on this motor. I can maximize for speed. I might bump my head, you know, three times per electrical cycle or six times per electrical cycle, uh, but that's okay. It gives me a little bit more voltage to go faster. Bus clamping, uh, it's on by default, but uh, it shouldn't really matter. Um, the boost and run currents are set the same, so you don't get a little disturbance when you go from boost to run. That's by default. A hold current is just a third of whatever your continuous is. I set the, the hold time low because I, I want it to move and settle and not have to wait so long. But, you know, hook up your load, and if it takes longer to settle, put a bigger number in here, right? Uh, detent, I didn't see any benefit for this. Uh, actually, it made things a little noisier uh, at at speed and speed for this motor again, I only got 120 volts AC, so um, it's a very low speed. So the detent comp, uh, 4,000 made it worse, 400. I don't know if it sounds better or not. It sounds the same to me. Uh, this looks closer to zero. I don't see any improvement. I just leave that alone. Uh, don't mess with the detent comp unless you have a resonance at a specific speed. Um, we also have uh, some speeds and accelerations to command here. These are not calculated values. I must have been messing with these. Um, so this number would be much smaller like that. And uh, oh, set default. Yeah, there you go. Nice human numbers. That's what you get when you get a stepping motor. It's not a wicked fast motor. Um, presumably the current loop tuning works. <clears throat> motor phasing here. Okay, um, I'm not gonna show you the current loop tuning here because it's giving me a free motor phasing error. I checked my U-Haul and I can't get by it. So uh, don't mind the man behind the curtain. I'll fix that in the next beta release. What I'm trying to show you here is one rev is 3,000 micro steps, uh, 250 RPM, that's the default calculated values. Um, we're gonna also take a look at <clears throat> uh, voltage bus to see what our bus voltage is. We're gonna look at voltage terminal stepper to see what the back EMF is, plus the IR drop. Uh, it's the field-oriented control, so this will be the imaginary part, which is predominant. There's still a real part, which the phase for a stepper is not 90 degrees, but in line with the, the, the flux field. Um, so there's a real component too, but we'll look at the uh, event status miscellaneous voltage limit warning, and we'll make the move. Single rev move, 
reading trace data from amplifier, a little bit of voltage limit. I'm going to back down in my speed a little bit here because uh, I would I predicted 200 RPM, uh, not a problem, but anything over that might start bumping your head. So um, you can see the command uh, for the profile velocity. Uh, we have actual current and commanded current. Uh, they're laying on top of each other. That's good. Uh, there's a little bit of voltage limit when I get started, no big deal. Uh, while I'm running, my DC bus is sitting at, uh, just uh, my bus is above uh, 120 rectified for sure. It should be like 160, but I'm bumping into 140 occasionally. And my bus is sitting up here at uh, 160 while we're moving. So a little bit of, a little bit of droop of, on the cap while we're moving. Um, so I'm going to show that when you go too fast, uh, you start to bump your head a little bit on the voltage limit. Yeah, so this is, you're starting to fold back your current. I didn't lose any micro steps here for single rev, um, but if I keep pushing the speed beyond its capability, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to get a, yeah, it's it it may have lost some micro steps there, but yeah, this one only went half a rev. So you see, when the current folds back too low, uh, here we are below zero for actual current. Uh, you've collapsed. You you can't. Uh, you know, you don't have any torque, right? So uh, you'll have voltage limit, and that occurred uh, right as we're getting into the top speed. Um, instability and then it snapped back and made a little bit um so we're gonna we're gonna have to slow that down uh, 240 should be no problem again if we had a uh, more rectified line uh we could go much faster uh this we're hitting this speed and this of course is uh given in terms of full steps uh at a frequency of you know, 300 RPM divided by 60 seconds per minute, five times 300. So 1.5 kilohertz of full step frequency. And that's, you know, we're starting to roll off just like the speed torque curve said. Um, anyways, yeah, uh, next time we'll take a look at, uh, we'll call it sensorless with a, a permanent magnet motor and see what that looks like. Um, it's not exactly feeding back and closing the loop. It's just purely open loop. But for some applications, that's good enough. But lots of torque uh, with a stepping motor, not good for high speed. Um, put an encoder on it. You can do encoder corrections. And uh, thanks for watching. This is available in the XTL with an arm, ADP with an arm, and XSJ with an arm. Uh, next, it'll be folded into the plus drives. Thanks for watching.